Hello and uh, welcome back to a new episode of uh, the Fluke Friday. I think it's episode 10. And in the Fluke Friday I go through all the series of uh, Fluke from uh, starting with the lowest number all the way up. And uh, we arrived in the 90s. So that means we have the Fluke meters, the scope meters. The 97 IFR and the 92D series 2. Little disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Fluke. These and these items are not original, but I made this for the purpose of this video because I'm a fan and of course because of the copyright. It will not be for sale. And here we have them both. Um, this is still the, the Philips and I explain later. It has the PM prefix here and that is the 97. The 97 in the first was the highest maybe there's even a 99 but it could also be that that was in the series 2 and here we have the improved series 2 and that is the 92 series 2 b version and this display looks already a lot better just for size wise um, this is what the owen scope meter looks like and that is about the size of an normal 87 so they are quite big but back to why it says Philips so and why it says Philips well Philips in that time especially in Europe was a huge huge company and uh, Philips uh, made a lot of test equipment just like uh, Fluke did in the US and uh, Philips had a huge dealer network, service network, distribution network all over Europe. They even had uh, multiple factories around. And uh, Fluke in that time was really looking for expansion and uh, doing an alliance with, with Philips. And they did that in 1987. Uh, that gave immediately a very big market for Fluke to sell its US products in Europe. And because of the distribution network that already was there, they really immediately could do a lot of sales and they could sell the Philips products in the US. So then they started the alliance. But then it went so well that in uh, 93, Fluke just bought Philips, the whole measurement uh, and test equipment department. They uh, just buy it. And uh, that's why you start to see around those years between uh, the 87 and the 93, you, show, you slowly see that uh, PM prefix on the, on the products from Philips will slowly disappear. Here it still says PM 97. Well, here, this is a later model. It already says Fluke and the PM has disappeared. And also uh, the color of the devices, the, the professional range from Philips was usually brownish. And during this alliance, they slowly turned uh, white. And I have a few examples of that. And it really paid off for Fluke to, uh, to buy the Philips company, at least for the test and uh, measurement uh, department. Uh, they still sell the scope meter. It was a huge, huge success. So let's have a closer look at the first models that we have here. Yeah, it is, it is pretty big. I have here again the 87, just for size. And uh, the display is very basic still, but it was around 91 that this one uh, came out. And uh, I read on the website of Fluke that I really developed this uh, together. Uh, although it only says Philips, Fluke was already very involved. Um, the 97 and the 99 have a backlight, but I think my backlight broke. And, uh, well, that's quite normal. They are really old. And it could be that uh, uh, the backlight just broke or that the converter broke. But I, I need to still find out what it is. I already find something to replace that. But let me see if I can do the backlight. Because when it's darkish, you don't see too well. It says backlight, so I push that button. But nothing happens, so it's clearly broken. But it should look a little bit like this. So that we find a solution for that later. But when we take it out of his protection, it 
you can see, well, it looks a bit like a huge multimeter, and it actually is. Oh, here, cool. It even has a little operating manual, and here it says the here it says Fluke and Phillips, the Global Alliance Test and Measure Equipment. And it feels kind of rubbery. And indeed, it has a. <laughs> I didn't even notice before. Cool. And it just fits here in this compartment. So it, uh, it is an oscilloscope, but also a multimeter. Now it is in oscilloscope mode. It is uh, 50 megahertz, which is quite serious, but it does uh, 25 um, mega samples per second. So it's not as high as you would usually find now, but. It was uh, pretty serious already, but um, I'm running now from uh, batteries. The power plug is really if a problem. If you find these meters second hand, usually the power plug is gone or the adapter. And uh, I will show you later what it looks like, but it is very, very deep. And uh, so that's usually difficult. If you use a standard plug, it will not fit. And also the polarity is the other way around. The positive is in the side and the negative in the middle. But it is a sort of a DC plug, but you need a very deep one. And the adapters sell very expensive because of that reason. But I found a solution for that too. Um, the meter, now it is a voltage meter. It is in AC. And these are the function buttons. So. Um, if you want to put the DC, you switch it over. Now we can have a quick look of um, how many counts it is. You can do a manual range or auto range, and you just do that by selecting the DC one has a 3 kilovolt range. That is pretty cool. Or I set it back to auto, which is now. So let's see how many counts it is. Um, the probe, you can see here in the millivolt setting, you just use the normal bananas. But if you go higher than a few millivolts, then you need to use your probes here with the BNC. And about the BNCs, the because the scope is, the channels are fully isolated, and because it's portable, you are also floating from ground, which is great. And they even have some sort of protection here around, and the probes the same, and they only have the contact in the middle. The middle, and if you see in the back here, you see the metal of the shielding. But it only contacts there, not here on the BNC. This is, seems almost like plastic, or they covered it with some sort of paint, so that you, when you touch it, you don't get shocked. So let's have a look at those probes then. I got some accessories with it. And well, we have here the communication adapter. It goes with infrared, and this is still the old serial that you just uh, you just uh, click it on here and uh, now we can communicate you need a special software I did found some old versions but uh, because these or the scope is very old it is uh, it was difficult to find and and because they already made newer versions but then the older are not supported and uh, yeah well, I need to see what that does or not. So that is the communication. Then we have the probes. And the probes here are also, again, plastic. So even though it looks like BNCs, they are BNCs, but still, it is protected. But the metal, again, is still touching, so you do have well, the probe cables look very strong. It is not like your normal oscilloscope probes. It's also like one and a half meter and pretty long. So we are really here 
almost industrial industrial and well it's 10 mega ohms 15 picofarads up to 600 volts and well if we go above a few milli it says here millivolts only so i don't know if that is up to 2000 up to 4000 millivolts but let's say above a volt we need to start uh, changing to this and uh, well you just click it like a bnc so but first let's try to do the millivolts so we just put them in the top in the bananas we are in dc volts i think it can even do uh, ac and dc at the same time so that is also very nice um, let me try to put first uh, 100 millivolts let's see if it goes crazy or not I probably need to switch it over to millivolts with meter I need to say millivolts here and there it is okay how many counts do we have Oh, not that much. Three thousand. I'm trying a bit more, and we can still go to a few falls even. Oh, of course, it is uh, three thousand. I see here three falls, three hundred millivolts. Yeah, clear. And it could go up to three kilovolts also. So yeah, clearly this is a three thousand. Even a little bit more. Oh. And the nice thing is here, you can see here also what happens. So if I put some fast changes, then it will slow show also here in this little oscilloscope. Why well, it's not oscilloscope mode because that is this mode, but here it still shows kind of a trend so if I just put this here I was trying to find uh, with one of the buttons, of course I don't read the manual, if it was kind of a histogram. And, but it is very fast, so it is what they now have in the multimeters, this bar in the bottom. Only this one goes uh, up and down. Because it, it is too, too fast to, to show uh, it as a histogram. At least I didn't find it, that would have been a great uh, option also. Well, it can also measure ohms. So if we go to the ohms, uh, I'm using in my DMM check plus. I have a few. They are all one. One percent. So this should be 100. So it's a little bit off. And the voltage was a little bit high. In the resistance, it's a little bit low. But I also didn't zero it. So maybe if I zero it. But that's probably even lower because. Okay. One guy. That one was spot on, I remember. I'm not anymore in auto mode. Yeah, same. Okay. It is uh, very good. And I didn't zero it yet, so. This one was spot on, I know. Look at that. Tenkai. This is Tenkai, no problem there. 100k. Okay. It is a diet mode. And we even have RMS. That is pretty cool. Let's see, because here we can do AC as well. 
So putting it to AC. But it is 5 volts, so it's probably too much. I need to get my probes. So well, I'm also using it for the first time, so I usually do it wrongly first. So I'm connecting the probe. It is voltage RMS. And uh, let's connect it to here and let's connect it to here. This is now. Ah, oh, cool. It shows a little scope. And this is a 5 volt RMS, exactly 50% duty. And uh, this is on the DMM check plus. It was calibrated on an, uh, 7.5 or 8.5 millimeter. So it does indeed do RMS, otherwise we would have seen 5.5 volts or something. Even though it is a multimeter mode, you can still see here it is 100 hertz. It is a 50% duty. And so if I switch it on and off again, I can see what it does with, I think, 10K. Uh -huh. Does it see that? Yes, it does. And the RMS still shows the correct 10 kilohertz, 50%. Pretty cool for a multimeter mode. I was clicking a, a little bit more on all the buttons, and it has a lot more tricks uh, in his sleeves. Because if I look here, we can not only see the frequency duty cycle, um, we can change the scale. We can even do dB volts, dB millivolts, dB watts, audio watts. So a lot of things it can show. Oh, it can do even more. I just click on the meter button again. And then you can see it can show you RMS and DC at the same time. So if there is a DC component inside, you can even see that or measuring DC with an AC component. That is pretty smooth. <laughs> and probably when I do this one and then again this one, no, it only works with the AC mode. Well, if I put the big light on top, the display doesn't look that bad at all. And you can see it, so in daylight it will not be a problem that the backlight is not working. But if I switch the light off and in the camera it looks a lot better than with the naked eye. But uh, yeah, I need to find a solution uh, for that. But for now we can play with it. And of course there is also the oscilloscope uh, mode. And then we start to see a lot more. Let me see if I... Just like uh, all the modern scopes it has an auto set button. So if I switch it on, I put some signal. I think only I have now my B channel switched on. Now now my both channels are on, but it is not syncing at all. So let me just do the auto tune. Here we are. I can switch off my B channel. So now we are only looking at the A channel. And well, you can even add the two channels together. And it seems A arrow up and B arrow to the right. I think this is kind of an X, X Y mode. That is also nice. It can do that. You can do averaging on and off. How well does the auto mode work? Well, I switch it off and I switch it back on. The frequency should now be different. Auto set, clack, 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 clack. And it can't do that. Why is Well, I'm now putting 10 megahertz from my distribution amplifier for my square wave. And uh, what will that do? It can trigger. And we can even move. Ah, it is quite cool. This oscilloscope works quite simple. Let's see if we put uh, something higher, like 30 megahertz. 
So I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised because it is from 91 and that means it's like 30 years ago and there is an auto set button and it actually works. It, it, it triggers on a low frequency, it triggers on a high frequency and I'm just pushing some buttons and I actually see something on the screen. So it was already very user friendly. Um, let's see if I put now a little bit the higher frequency to see if it indeed can do the 50 MHz or not. I'm trying a little bit with the light, but now it's too much. But here, then it totally disappears. I really need to look at the backlight. But I think like this we can see. And well, I'm now at 10 volts peak peak. It is uh, my probe is here is 10 to 1. But of course, this is just a cable, so it is one. So the readout will probably be wrong. But let's first try with the 10 volts. And if I then uh, put a little bit more, we are on 10 megahertz. Let's do a little bit more. 20 megahertz. Can we do? Yeah, we can still go a bit more. I'm using, of course, here the 50 ohms to close it. Well, we are up to 40 megahertz. And that is, we cannot zoom in more. So we are in the end of our time. And now we are close to 50. And you see already the amplitude is a little bit going down. And now my generator cannot go higher. But it went up to 60. But I wonder... If you do the voltage a little bit lower, maybe the sine wave stays nicer. Okay, I'm generating now a 10 megahertz square wave from my little generator. And uh, we can go to 20. And you see that the square wave starts to be a sine, which is normal because the, to measure properly on a square wave, you need at least two and a half to three times, and preferably five times the frequency. So that means two and a half times the, the 20 megahertz is indeed my 50. And well, if I go a lot higher, you will see it starts to be more and more a sign. And this is 50 megahertz, and it's still triggering properly. And uh, I can go even higher, but then you will see you will see a drop because then we reach the limit of the analog bandwidth. Uh, 60 megahertz, 70. Now you see a drop. 80, 90, 100 megahertz, and we can still see something. Yeah, of course. We can't zoom in much more, and the level is so small but we can see it is still triggering <laughs> well the backlight is not working i want to fix that I'm not sure i'm going to do that this video but then it will come later and i found something i forgot the name but it's sort of an led and it is an led in paper almost it is a very thin like paper and it is yeah, and it just comes with the converter and I have a converter for 5 volts so if I if my uh, inverter for this LED because it's high voltage if it doesn't work in the scope meter I can connect it directly to the battery because I already have 5 volt and then I just put this smaller batteries inside because the, new, the modern batteries have a lot more capacity, so that gives me a lot more space. And then I can put this converter there. But first we try to do it normal, and yeah, it, gives, it gives a light. You can't see it now, but here it is. And I read somewhere that I try not to do that. You can even cut this to size if you want. And uh, yeah, it, it should give a nice glow to the display. It is now very white, but the display itself is greeny, so it will just give that warm green uh, light. 
I made again a whole list with uh, a few specifications from the 93, the 95, the 97. And I also listed uh, the two series, the B2 series that we will show now. But we can put them then side by side. Uh, the 92B series 2 that I have here, display is a lot improved. And, but there is also five years in between because this one was came out around 96. So let's have a closer look at that one too. So and here it is. The display is instead of greenish, it is it is black. And uh, well, let's let's have it here. Yeah, it looks a little bit less impressive because it doesn't have the cover, but it is exactly the same. If I take this one out of the cover, the size is the same. Here we already see the Fluke uh, branding. We can see also that the PM prefix is already gone, and instead of PM92B, it just says 92 with Fluke in front. This one does not have battery, so I need to power it from the power plug. But uh, yeah, the power plug is this weird deep thing, well, and it is a little bit damaged. But I didn't mind because I really wanted to show the, the difference. But this is, is the same. Also only millivolts here in the top. To isolate it again. Connections insulated. And um, so I made the power plug here. This is already uh, a longer pin than normal. But also this is longer and thinner because if I take a standard plug where I have one here this one is also long but the cover just doesn't fit so if I try it it will not go in even though the matting metal is long enough because this also needs to be longer but maybe if I take it out put some uh, shrink wrap then it will just uh, go in. But I found one with a, with a little gray. And then it will just go. But it goes very deep. Especially with the cover. So let's boot it up. The voltage is not that precise. It needs to be between 11 and 18 volts. And uh, that's about it. The old adapter I think the BC 190 but in the 97 scope it's probably around 180 milliamps but this one is already around 900 milliamps 17 and a half volt but we need somewhere in between somewhere in between uh, 10 and uh, 18 volts so you can just use a standard adapter but Polarity is the other way around. I would just put around 12 volts. I already changed the polarity inside of the plug. I'll uh, power it on. Now let's see. And this display is a lot nicer. It is a white is light. So here we can see the display a bit better. You can see it is a B version, but already from the Series 2. There is also a normal Series 2 that is in between this one and the one I showed before. But it also has the same display as the first version and the same uh, yeah, backlight that is not necessarily very good. Uh, from the B, there is no Series 1 because it is, I didn't find one. Let me say it like that. Um, because it is just an improved Series 2, that's why it's called the B. Um, the scope, we also have here the, the meter. So if I go to meter, here we can immediately do the voltage in both. Oh, I like this display a lot. The ohms measurements diode also and the millivolt setting with the two in the top so in the measure menu here we are now in meter if i switch now to ohms it will tell you you need to use the banana plugs so that is very clear now if i go to meter it says you need to input a b and c jack 
and even in this menu there is a submenu and instead of doing the DC faults and the AC faults I can select there what I want to see so this is pretty advanced in dBs in time more here yeah, we can do a lot more options pretty advanced already so okay I connected now the probe to the DMM check plus on one R it has exactly five volts AC and um, what if we do the auto set button I like that I put the scope now in the bottom also so we are actually in meter mode not in scope mode in still we can see everything um, it is now in DC but we can just say well let's do AC and DC select item then we have here the RMS and here the DC component um, let's do AC only then select the item it works pretty cool and can we even yes we can even zoom in and zoom out this is pretty nice and I had the setting before that I could even see the frequency yes here we can see it's the 100 hertz let's go to 10k And it, is, and it immediately triggers because I switch it over that is really fast now you think I back to 100 hertz puff pretty cool and we are in meter mode not even in scope mode let's go to scope mode now to set up Puff, there it is. Okay, let's do the quickly some ohms measurements in the top here. Tube, tube. Go to ohms. Is it any good? 100 ohms. Yep, that is 100 ohms. 1k yeah that's one k so as a multimeter 10k 100k yes trying the millivolt setting can we go also to three volts in also 3.5 okay again the 10 megahertz square well probably will also change at the higher because here we are it is already a little bit less a square and I see a little glitch here I also found here already I don't know where it is from I didn't see that on the other oscilloscope but if we go a lot higher you see now that it kind of lost already the square but it does it a lot better because this one is now at 30 megahertz while on the other oscilloscope it was around uh, 20 that it already start to really change so this one is better but that's correct because it's also 60 so but if we go a lot higher now 40 50 60 and now you see it drop also but it still triggers 100 110 yeah now it just totally disappears 
I forgot to mention that sometimes these uh, scope meters also have a little generator inside. And the 192 b that they have there with a the nice white screen doesn't have that because it's the lowest number. But the 97 that I had here yeah, that I showed before, it is one of the highest model in that first uh, series. It can do uh, 1.95K, 976 uh, hertz and a 488 hertz. And um, we can quickly put that on the oscilloscope just to see. But to generate, you need to use the two bananas in the middle. And then we need to go to the special menu to the generator. And here we can choose if we want a square. Well, here we have the square. Or we do square in a lower frequency or even lower. But I saw there also was a sine wave and that surprised me a bit. This one really is the highest, one of the highest models. And so I'm putting now the slow ramp voltage. I put here. And you can see what it's doing. So these scope meters are very versatile, of course, depending on the numbers that you buy, the higher the number, the, the more it has. This is the 92, so it's too low, it doesn't have any generators inside. Uh, but the display is a lot uh, better, and we saw a lot of uh, extra settings, and it triggers very good. For nowadays, this would be very big, I think. Um, but I still make them. And the funny thing is, it says fluke here, but it doesn't mean that they are now made somewhere else. They still say made in Holland. And even the newer ones, there is now a smaller one in the 120 series. I think the 123 and the 124. And there is an even bigger one than this one, and that is the 190 series. And I have a 192 from that version. Well, why this one has a nice protection, this one hasn't, and why is that? Well, Fluke also made a very handy bag to carry it in. And it is smart, because you can just put a meter in here. You have all your accessories here. You have the power adapter, I can show you the plug, how weird it is. Here, you have the probes and the serial. This one is already a little bit more modern. It has the same infrared, but it has already USB. I hope it is a normal driver or I find it somewhere at Fluke. And it has an adapter. Yeah. And well, you can see the plug is very, very long. So it goes all the way. In, like this and you can just use it from inside and they are even so smart that they put a hole here in the side so you can even charge it just like this so you can just leave it in to protect it but I think even with with the bumper it still fits Yes, it does. Look at that. So, well, I decided not to open them in the end. I will make a separate repair video when I uh, fix the backlight of the 97 series one. And then we spend a lot more time because otherwise I'm going to rush it and then probably break something. And I want to take my time because they are really, really nice meters. So that was it for this Fluke Friday. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.